That the polar caps are today melting at an alarming rate is undisputed. But until now, no accurate and reliable data of the month-to-month -month variations of both land and sea ice mass have been available. Since the Arctic sea ice and the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets play such an important role in the regulation of Earth's global climate, it is crucial to measure changes in this marine and continental ice environment. The Cryosat-2 satellite built by EADS Astrium will survey these natural and man-driven changes in what is known as the cryosphere. Based on techniques tested on the precursor ERS and Envisat missions, Cryosat-2 has been developed by ESA. The program's first satellite was lost in 2005 when its rocket launcher failed. A replacement was almost immediately decided and built in a record time. Cryosat 2 features a number of improvements. The most significant is the complete duplication of its advanced technology altimeter, CIRAL, SAR Interferometric Radar Altimeter. If knocked out by a chance failure, there is a spare, just like all the other equipment on the satellite. This all-weather microwave radar developed by Thales Alenia Space will work in three ways. Over the oceans and central ice sheet plateau, it will operate as a traditional altimeter. Over sea ice, its synthetic aperture processing with a smaller footprint will allow it to see the ocean surface in gaps between the ice flows and to resolve the elevation of the ice surface topography above sea level. In its most advanced high-resolution mode, using a second antenna and closely spaced radar pulses, it will measure with the precision of a couple of centimetres the thickness and variations in surface height of the polar ice cap so that changes in thickness can be measured. To obtain comprehensive coverage of both poles, the satellite will circle the Earth at an altitude of just over 700 kilometers, with an orbit highly inclined to the equator. During its three-year mission, its data will be received by a ground station in Kiruna, Sweden, and controlled by ESA's Space Operations Center in Germany. Cryosat-2 will be the third of ESA's Earth Explorer missions to be placed in orbit after Gochi and SMOS, all contributing to a better understanding and protection of our planet. Almost 80% of the Earth's fresh water is locked up in the cryosphere, the snow, the ice and permafrost. Polar ice covers about 20% of our planet's surface, some 50 million square kilometers. It plays a crucial role in regulating the Earth's climate. It reflects sunlight back out into space, it insulates the ocean against polar climates, and it regulates the global ocean circulation patterns. Its melting is having a dramatic impact on the rise of sea levels and the global climate. Recent years have seen record reductions in extent and concentrations of the Arctic sea ice. In Antarctica, giant icebergs have calved and some ice shells have disintegrated. On the other hand, ships have recently been trapped for weeks in unusually heavy Antarctic pack ice conditions. Cryosat-2, ESA's third Earth Explorer mission in orbit, will be carrying one of the most sophisticated instruments to map and measure from space this floating sea ice and continental ice. The synthetic aperture interferometric radar altimeter, CIRAL, will be able to measure changes in ice thickness with an accuracy of about a centimeter. Sea ice, relatively thin, up to a few meters thick, greatly influences regional temperatures and ocean currents. In contrast, ice sheets that blanket Antarctica and Greenland are several kilometers thick. It is these that directly influence sea levels. But to calibrate and analyze the Cryosat-2 data, scientists will also require the in-situ truth. CIRAL will make its measurements from over 700 kilometers away in space. They need to check its results with those that they can obtain at first hand in small areas on the ground. 
and they can see how CIRAL's results might vary as local environmental conditions change. These local conditions, such as snow grain size or temperature and color and reflectivity of the ice, can vary widely over the vast polar regions. Preparing for the spaceborne mission, previous campaigns in Greenland, Canada and Antarctica have correlated this ground information with data obtained from aircraft and helicopters. The campaigns included the use of an airborne version of the Cryosat radar altimeter. And after launch, ground teams living and working in hostile and isolated environments with temperatures of up to 30 degrees below zero will continue to obtain these local measurements which will independently validate what Cryosat 2 will be observing. This instrument, unlike any other previous ones, has been specifically designed to deal with the marine ice in the Arctic Ocean. In particular, it has a much higher resolution than the previous generations of instruments. And this should allow us to distinguish individual pieces of ice in the ocean and so measure its change in thickness much more accurately than before. Cryosat is different from previous efforts to measure ice thickness because Cryosat provides an overview, a complete overview of the ice thickness changes both in the North Pole and the South Pole. It's important to have people here because if you haven't got people on the ground, then we've actually got no idea what the snowpack conditions are actually like when the radar's going over on the plane and on the satellite. So without people in the field, you've got no way of understanding what the real snowpack properties are like um, unless you've got people actually making measurements, digging snow pits, taking density profiles and, and so on. Well, there are two big ice sheets in the, in, on Earth. One is in the Antarctic and there is a very large amount of ice down there. And even quite small changes in that ice could produce quite significant changes in sea level. So if you live near sea level, and about a tenth of the population of the world does, it's rather important to know what's going on down in the Antarctic. In the Arctic, there's another ice sheet, but it's a rather different one. It's a very delicate, thin layer of frozen seawater. And global warming will probably destroy that almost completely within the next 70 years. If we destroy that ice cap, then we'll change the ocean circulation. And if we change the circulation, ocean circulation, we could change our climate. Cryosat is very important because being able to measure the ice thickness changes so accurately and over the entire North and South Pole, then we can predict what will happen to the oceans in the future, whether they will rise significantly or whether they will heat up significantly. And this has an impact on climate, on flooding, and all of these aspects which are very important for the future of our world. It's a real privilege to be involved in such a sort of important um, operation, which is basically trying to understand how ice sheets are changing over sort of large scales, on scales of the sort of Greenland and Antarctic ice sheet which has always been very difficult to measure. So hopefully, by being here in the field and making these measurements, we can really help contribute to investigating how um, ice masses might respond to climate change. At one extreme, it's possible that we could make the winter climate of Western Europe very much colder. We could freeze up all the rivers, for example. We might even start to freeze up parts of the North Sea. At the other extreme, the changes may be, in fact, rather subtle and indeed possibly even hard to see. But the truth is today we don't know. One of the reasons we don't know is because we don't know enough about the ice itself.